Welcome to Heidi Relationships. Today, we'll read some more stories from Reddit. But before we start, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it, and maybe leave a comment down below. That would help the channel a lot. Thank you very much in advance. Husband came out as trend dollar. I filed for a divorce and left him. Am I a monster now? Relationships. The first one is titled, Six Months Separated, Feeling Good and Bad. My lawyer sucks. I hired her in May, yet my soon-to-be ex-wife still hasn't been served papers. My soon-to-be ex-wife sucks. She was blowing through money in the joint account like water, but my lawyer finally gave me the go-ahead to stop making deposits. She doesn't seem to give a duck about the kids, except to post 100 pictures on FB when she's got them for the whopping 60 hours a month that she has them. She's now dating a man that I presume she met through NAW. I did a little digging and found out he was arrested for evasion of child support, theft of $40,000, and possession of 18 grams of drugs. I'm terrified when my kids are with her. Dating kinda sucks. I dated a girl for exactly one month. We hit it off really well, and it seemed to be legit. Turns out she was basically, making, it work. She's mid-divorce as well living with her soon-to-be ex-husband in a house that's in foreclosure. She was using me as a means to an end. I broke it off when I realized what was happening. She flipped out and told me how much she loved me, etc. Five days later her FB status, X is now in a relationship with Y. Must have loved me a lot. Five days. Jesus. Two weeks after that I met up with an ex-girlfriend for lunch a couple of states away. That seemed to go pretty well, so I decided to ask her to get together for an official date to see if there's anything left there. She shot me down, and I understood, as she's just starting graduate school. However, two nights ago she texted me out of the blue asking me to come up. Naturally I couldn't, as the kids were sleeping in the other room. Seems she changed her mind about not wanting to start anything. Which makes me really overly happy. I know visits will be infrequent, with her school schedule and me having the kids. Honestly, it's probably the best kind of relationship try in this situation. Clear boundaries and general inaccessibility will force it to proceed at a slow pace. I needed to put all that out there. Thanks for reading. Update 1. I've been in a really good place recently. Divorce finalized, finances in order starting talks with someone really special to me. This weekend was a total cluster duck. The woman I'm starting to see pulled back yet again, which I can deal with given her current situation. What I'm having a big problem with is the kid's mom calling me up asking me to pick them up early on Sunday and telling me she doesn't think she'll be able to take them, for the foreseeable future. I went from a decent enough social life while being married, to having the kids all but every other weekend, to now having them more or less permanently, with no breaks. This is the beginning of her disappearing act. I expect from now on out, she'll take them maybe once every month or so, for a day trip only. They are going to suffer. I am going to suffer. My social life just went from a slow 25 miles per hour cruise to zero. Update 2. I'm sitting here wrapping an insane amount of Christmas gifts for the kids, for my family, and for her family. She's likely out running around with her boyfriend. I'm sleeping on a futon, because I decided to give my bedroom to my daughter so the kids wouldn't have to share a room anymore. She's got her boyfriend staying with her at her mom's house. I'm doing everything I can to ensure a healthy lifestyle for my children and rushing them to and from school so I can still put in a full work week. She's working 25 hours a week waiting tables can't find the time to call her kids on a regular basis. I'm working on getting out of the crippling debt I was left with. She's getting new piercings, tattoos, and Brazilian waxes, and new flagship smartphones. I'm sitting here drinking by myself while the kids are asleep in their rooms, and she's out being the teenager she always wanted to be. I'm orchestrating Christmas events and activities to do with the kids. She's bailing on taking them for her weekend because she didn't have time to go Christmas shopping. Even though she works 25 hours a week, in a strip mall, where she could visit a dozen stores before or after work, or on her break. 
I'm not bitter, but if the tables were turned I'd be painted in a terrible light. She's just a victim of circumstance. A victim of a mental illness which she's told everyone she has but doesn't. Update 3. It's been nearly a year since I last logged in. It's crazy reading my post history. Time for an update. Phew. What a year it's been. Quick backstory. For those who don't feel like diving into my post history. Ex-wife left me and our two children. I worked my ass off for them while sleeping on a futon in my own home, rented house. She went on a crazy downward spiral of nonsense. Read up, it's fun. Some quick comparisons. Then, constantly broke, getting yelled at for buying myself a coffee or energy drink every once in a while. Now, bought my first house, with the kids, this past summer. Upgraded from a 900 square feet rental home, to an 1,800 square feet house that I can finally call my own. Then, dreaded coming home from work to hear what else would be my fault. Now, enjoy picking the kids up from school every day and hearing everything they've got to say. Then, kids had zero friends because she couldn't hold healthy relationships with other parents. Now, Kids have been invited to more birthday parties than ever and have each become very close friends with a couple kids in the new neighborhood. Then, I'd constantly get guilted about her not having a support network, but never getting an explanation of what she meant. I could only surmise that it was because we lived closer to my family than hers. Now, the kids and I live tilde one hour from our closest relative, and 1.5 hours from her. We're doing very well and make trips to see family when the mood strikes. Then, constantly being told that I needed to quit my job and take a lower paying job somewhere closer to home because she needed me around more often. Even though I took my far away job because she wanted to move to the town that it's in. Now, the kids and I finally live in the town that we were working towards living in. It's awesome. Her. Living at her mother's house with her recovered heroin addict boyfriend, both of them rent free, and using whatever spare money they've got to get new tattoos and claiming, everything I do is for the children, to my face and plastering that sentiment all over Facebook. Me, finally living in my own home, with my children, in a town that I love. Being a productive member of society, and a valuable asset in my kids' lives. Deleted Facebook because I don't need to broadcast to friends and family about, the person I am. Those who matter know the sacrifices and progress I've made in my life. Summary, throughout the process of divorce, things can get grim. Hold on to what you love and don't let it go, unless it's your STBX. Let that crap go, make your own future for yourself. It may seem impossible now but keep your head up and push through. Lean on friends, lean on family. Get yourself well and push forward. The next one is titled, My husband came out as a trans woman. I asked for a divorce. Of course, let me start off this post by saying some of my terminology, use of words or general knowledge may be wrong or incorrect. I'm no expert by any means, but I'm not coming from a place of dishonesty or hate so to forgive any errors in this post with regards to the LGBT community. I met my husband in college and after many years of friendship, when we were both suddenly single at the same time ever, we jumped into a whirlwind romance that somehow lasted long distance in four years, culminating in college graduations, adult jobs and finally marriage at 25. We didn't have the perfect marriage, no one does, but between the long commutes and my heavy work schedule we drifted. So, I took a much needed long vacation with my mom. When I came back, and things were out of place and my husband was acting weird I went through his phone. And I found pictures, of him in provocative poses in my clothes, my intimates, my shoes. I was devastated. Breach of his trust aside in snooping I felt heartbroken. Who was this person? After weeks of fights and silence my husband told me he felt gender fluid and enjoyed cross-dressing. We attempted to patch things, but it didn't work, not really. Two years of unhappiness later I took time for myself and realized if I was so unhappy even after relocating, getting a new job with better pay and a new car that it was my marriage. Going home and turning the key felt like a jail sentence every night. Who dreads going home? 
I did. I asked for a divorce. He fought me tooth and nail. I'm not sure why. At that point he told me he was transgender. He, now she, had spent several months discussing it with co-workers, online on Reddit, etc. all before I asked for a divorce, and she bothered to mention it to me. I was heartbroken, crying and screaming. One phrase always stuck with me. They all agree you should be supporting me. This is a tough time for me. All I could think was you? You need support? I held hands at the altar with my best friend, my man, my husband. The future father of my children. The man who was supposed to support and protect me. Teach our future kids everything they needed to know the best way to catch a Pokemon, the superiority of the PS4, drive them to soccer. Hold my hand as we aged and traveled together. My husband, for all intents and purposes was dead to me. In that moment I felt widowed somehow. I'm alone now, I need support, I responded and that was that. Finally, I agreed to share the remainder of our lease, stay in separate bedrooms and move out at the end of the term and file for divorce. In my mind for tax purposes, it was easier, and it was to some extent. She asked if we could make things work. I said only if she got her own counselor. Until then we're separated. I even printed out a paper, a list of names for her to call. She never did. So, I suppose she also asked for a divorce in her own way, by never taking steps to take care of herself first. I kept my silence and never told anyone in my family what was going on other than I'd asked for the divorce and infidelity wasn't a factor. She updated her Facebook and name and a family member put two and two together and outed the full story to my family. But her family supports her, and her work has accepted her transition no problem. I don't regret anything. I got some pushback from her family for not standing by her, but I felt she left. She couldn't choose to be trans or not I accept that. But she confided in other people, discussed our marriage with others and ultimately wasn't willing to help herself to save our marriage. Even if it would've ultimately been a moot point. Regardless, I filed, it's official right before New Year's and today felt like the first day I was truly free and ready to share. A user in the comments said, You aren't a monster for not being okay with being blindsided by your husband's sudden transformation. Nothing you have said here implies to me that you are bigoted in any way. You just didn't sign up for this. That's okay. What's not okay are people telling you that you have to accept it. They're telling you that your sexual preferences are less important than his identity and that's just not true either. It sounds like you are both doing the best you can do in a horrible and socially awkward situation. Another user said, My husband came out at gay, and we recently got divorced. I found out he had cheated with men our whole marriage. Google the straight spouse network. I felt so alone till I found that site. It will connect you with other people going through similar things. It helps a lot to know you aren't alone. People always seem to forget the straight spouse who has been lied to all these years and left behind. The next one is titled, I ate a for laughing when a friend told me I had it easier because my husband died and her soon to be ex is dating. I am a widowed mom, little one and I recently moved to another state for a multitude of reasons. Mostly to stay close to my in-laws, who moved to warmer temps for health reasons. I have a mom friend. She's a neighbor. We have been doing play dates as our daughters are around the same age. We get along great for the most part. She's going through a divorce. She's the one who initiated it. All she does is complain about her husband. And how she hates being alone, etc. I listen. I'm supportive as I can be. She said to me the other night that I had no idea how hard she has it. She's alone. It's better for me because my husband flat out died. He's not out there dating other women. I'll never understand how alone she feels. And I just laughed. I couldn't help it. And I couldn't stop. I managed to mention that she initiated the divorce. She wanted to be single. But I couldn't stop laughing. So now she's mad at me. She still lets her daughter come over and play but she doesn't stay. And I'm okay with that. Because it was funny. But I Ada? Am I minimizing her feelings? I don't talk about my dead husband. I didn't compare my situation and hers. 
She did. Update. First of all, thank you for all the comments and messages and awards. I appreciate them all. Even the message that alluded to how I may somehow laugh at my kid someday and make her feel like crap because I don't react to insanity like this person thinks a normal person should. Whatever. So, the good outcome of this is that my, now ex, friend complained to a bunch of our neighbors about me and I have made quite a few new friends for both myself and little one. They enlightened me to the fact that she has pretty much alienated all of her close neighbors for the same type of reasons. She is someone who always has a worse problem than whatever problem you have. Is that a narcissist? She did make a half-ass attempt to apologize to me. But it was more of a, I'm sorry you took it like that, like there was another meaning to it lol I did tell her that I'm not mad at her. But lord does she have a skewered way of looking at things and I wish her well. But I don't have the energy to deal with a person like that. I'm too busy dealing with a toddler who wants to be Alice Cooper when she grows up. We've been watching the Muppets on Disney+. Plus. So far him and Elton John have been her favorite episodes. This is nothing as dramatic as my brother's wedding planning. Sorry. A user in the comments said, NTA. It's a bit rich when the person who initiates the divorce complains about being alone or the other party moving on. It's delusional. Another user said, my husband was deployed, and my best friend told me I had it much easier than she did her husband hadn't been deployed. But war was causing him to have to work much longer hours and his stress was increasing her stress. I couldn't believe her. WTF. I chose to never speak to her again. The next one is titled, I Ada. Don't want to create an expense report for my SOS inheritance money. I have supported us financially for nearly eight years. He quits jobs like he quits styles, so I have been the breadwinner, and often the only source of income, for our entire relationship. His father died recently, and he inherited some money. Now he wants an itemized report of where every dime of his money goes, like I get that he wants to make sure the money is spent wisely, but, I have always cleared every purchase with him even when it was my money because I feel like it is our money, our income even if it was my paycheck. Dot now he suddenly inherits money, for perspective, it's still less than my salary, so we're not talking millions of dollars or anything crazy, and wants to know where his money is spent. I said, okay, I will do that for you, but I find it interesting that you never questioned how the money was being spent when it wasn't yours, and it was, ours. I've now decided to withdraw, his, money from the checking account and hand him, his, cash so he can spend it and keep track of it himself in the morning, when the bank opens, so he's pissed and doesn't understand why I'm pissed. I ate a for getting mad that my partner wants to account for, every dime of his money, when I've been supporting us for 7 plus years and he's never been interested in our finances prior? Edit. I can't just evict him. He is on the lease and has tenants' rights. It would cost $2,200 in a 60-day notice to break the lease which only has three months left anyways so that option doesn't make sense. We aren't married, no kids, nor do I want or can have them anyways, so I don't need to worry about divorce or the future children. It was a life insurance payout so legally it wouldn't be seen as income or communal property. Although the fair, respectable thing to do would be for him to make it part of our household, he doesn't have to, nor can I make him do so. No, he doesn't have a magical dick. Lol I have to say that comment made me laugh the most, thanks. Update. I told him we will be opening a separate account with his inheritance money in it. He can get a job and direct deposit into said account if he chooses, but the purpose of the account is to separate his money from mine. We hate our apartment so neither of us were planning on staying here after the lease anyways. Not sure what the living situation will look like afterwards, but we both know we need to plan on moving within the next few months. We are dividing the money, not 50-50, because I don't think that is appropriate given it being his inheritance money, and I will have a portion of it to repay some of the expenses he's cost me over the years. I broke down his annual expenses, again, and told him he can either pay for it out of his money or get a job. I don't care where the money comes from but paying his share of the bills is non-negotiable. Again, this won't be a 50-50 split, 
I make decent money and don't want to run through his inheritance in mere months, but he needs to be responsible for himself. He looked shocked but agreed with my terms. I've always been fair, or given myself the shorter end of the stick because I know I can bounce back faster than he can, so he had no reason to distrust me from the beginning of this. I think he realizes that now. He knows he's impulsive and piss poor with money, and I've always made sure he was provided for. Hopefully this was the wake-up call he needed if not, at least it will be over in a couple months. Update 2, couple weeks later, he paid off a credit card that I maxed out supporting him and will be paying off the balance on my truck. So, he is essentially splitting the money with me now. A user in the comments said, NTA. What are you doing with this loser? Do you really not love yourself to have put up with this? He's like a child. Quitting jobs repeatedly? Living off your money like he is entitled to it but doesn't want to share whatever is in his pocket? He's selfish. He's immature. He's a user. He reminds me of my ex. He used to borrow money from me all the time and never pay me back and I was too shy to ask for it. He was also lazy and couldn't amount to much. He lost his crap when I wouldn't pay for his weed tickets even though I told him to stop smoking weed and driving with it because at that point I knew I wouldn't get it back. I would post about him on Reddit and ask people for advice and they all said I should leave him, but I always took his ass back. I regret that. I hope you listen to Reddit. Leave him. There are men out there who would never expect you to pay more than what is fair for you. Heck. My current boyfriend would literally spend his last cent on me, not that I would let him but it's the thought that counts. And trust me, you can only upgrade from here on out. Another user said, look, you know your NTA. It sounds like the question you should be asking is, am I a complete mug for believing that my marriage was a partnership, when my husband was using me for financial support, but has shown he doesn't feel he has to contribute? That is the real issue here. You have treated him as an equal, even when you were carrying you both, and he does not reciprocate. Has this come as a shock to you? Or have you always known that your husband values himself above all? You could do counseling, talk to him, walk away. Don't just put up and shut up though. This is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the relationship stories. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video and write a comment. I really appreciate your support and it helps my channel so much. Thank you.